Next on ITV1, more top secrets revealed. In about 5% of the cases, uh, you really couldn't explain them at all. Uh, speeds and manoeuvres uh, going beyond anything we had. Those are the real UFOs. Well, initially, a very bright uh, glow uh, on the ground that was as bright as a magnesium flare. Uh, it took us by surprise because the park was empty and silent and so on. And then suddenly it um, developed in size and illuminated what appeared to be a, a translucent dome. Very bright, very white, and obviously um, metallic. I didn't see any lights on it, but it was the noise which frightened me. It was a terrible, high-pitched droning sound. I've seen dozens of them, and I've been quite convinced in my mind, you know, that these are not just satellites, they're not just roving planes or helicopters. These do extraordinary things, manoeuvres that nothing that we know can do in Earth concepts. Unidentified flying objects have fascinated and perplexed the public for years. The government has struggled to know how to respond. A confused public still looks for answers, as our airspace apparently continues to be penetrated by the unknown. Mrs. King, what was it like to travel in a spaceship? Well, it was fantastic at first, mm -hmm. going up. But when you get up a certain height, you feel nothing at all. You are kind of conscious of floating, but it's just a, like a floating motion. It's peculiar. Were you frightened the first time you went terrified, up? Terrified, absolutely terrified. Well, so would anyone be, wouldn't they? I'm sure I would. How many times have you travelled in this place? Three times. Three times. Were they all, were they recently? Yes, the last one was February of this year. Some stories seem far-fetched, yet more credible sightings have prompted worried individuals to report their experiences to the government for investigation. Declassified documents from the National Archive show that 50 years ago, Prime Minister Winston Churchill was asking what all this stuff about flying saucers amounted to. He was briefed from a report which concluded that all sightings had rational explanations, a stance that has characterised the Ministry of Defence's response ever since. The report was kept secret for 50 years. But a decade after it was written, a young teenager in Somerset saw mysterious objects from her bedroom window that she'll never forget. Years later, Anne Lehman has returned to live in the same house, although her teenage bedroom is now in an unused wing. It was in the evening when I went up to bed and I saw this light, uh, a spherical light. It was yellow in the centre but with red and orange and green flashing around it. And it suddenly moved towards me and then sort of hovered around and then shot to one side and then back again. And it was there for about five, ten minutes and then it shot off and disappeared, just went completely. Anne was soon to find out that so-called men in black were not just the fictional characters now so familiar in Hollywood films. I wrote to RAF Chivener in Barnstable and I explained what I was seeing and I said, are you trying something out? Then to my surprise, a letter came back to say that somebody was going to come and see me. Uh, he was a very nice chap, he was very interested in what I'd seen, but he did say to me, don't tell anybody, don't tell your friends about it because we're not sure, you know, probably nothing at all and nobody will believe you. I do wonder now why I wasn't supposed to say anything about it. Well, I thought he probably knew what it was. If I twigged that it was something unusual, I wouldn't have kept it to myself, would I? 
Anne is not alone in her experience of being visited then silenced. Many documented UFO sightings have been made by police officers. And Gary Heseltine, a detective for the last 11 years, investigates hundreds of them in his spare time. He's found that even a fellow police officer had been warned to stay tight-lipped. The next day, uh, having reported that he'd actually seen it, he, he found himself being summoned to his force headquarters, where he found himself with uh, six other officers waiting to be interviewed by an, uh, uh, an official from the Ministry of Defence. Uh, he was interviewed, he was uh, shown uh, various... Uh, diagrams of shapes of UFOs and he definitely gained the impression that uh, the, the Ministry of Defence official knew much more about the subject than that they ever let on uh, and at the end of his meeting he was told uh, don't mention this to anyone and, and similarly he checked with the other officers that were outside getting interviewed and they were all told the same thing so there definitely is an element of secrecy and I certainly don't think the British public ever could really get to the bottom of what's uh, occurred. Anne's letter and the report of the investigation into her sighting were kept secret by a government concerned about compromising national security. Anne kept silent until the information was declassified 30 years later. The chap wasn't in uniform, but he obviously had an air of importance about him, the way he, he stood and acted. And since he said, don't tell anybody, well, you didn't. You just accepted it. UFO enthusiasts believe the government knows more than it likes to reveal. Matthew Williams, who formerly worked as an investigator for HM Customs and Excise, has been a full-time UFO researcher since his own sighting in 1990. Generally, the responses I've had from the Ministry of Defence has been that uh, UFOs are of no defence significance and uh, that probably my sighting could be easily explained as something else um, more conventional, like an aircraft or something of that nature. I mean, I've never really been satisfied with the explanations I've had from the Ministry of Defence. Mr Williams's study of declassified documents has led him to conclude that fellow civil servants played down UFO sightings so as to avoid public pressure for a major investigation. He believes their terse replies to the public belie the fact that in the past they've actually investigated sightings at a very high level. The Ministry of Defence, when they investigate UFO sightings, are often uh, playing them down. And from the do government documents we found at the Public Records Office, we can show that uh, in the past certainly has been the case that if the Ministry of Defence has been in, in, you know, sort of very interested in a, in a case sighting and it has investigated it, they will still tell the public that their sighting was something probably like a plane. I think since the 1960s there's been a policy which is quite clearly shown in the files from the Air Ministry's Operations Centre in so much as to not um, excite the public as to UFO reports that these things should be explained away as um, natural phenomena or aircraft sightings and not to get the public too sort of fired up on this subject. Obviously there is a public interest. Um, with the Cold War in the 60s, the public were quite sort of um, worried about a lot of things that were happening and I think it was it was just deemed not uh, not suitable to sort of go exciting the imaginations of the general public with UFO sighting reports. Playing down UFO reports was clearly government policy at the time of Anne's sighting in the 1960s. And then I had a letter and it said I had discovered a new star and they named it number something. And I thought, well, what a cheek. So that was it as far as I was concerned. I'd discovered a star number something or other, and that was the end of that. Over the years, Nick Pope has had a variety of different posts within the MOD. In the early 90s, he was responsible for investigating UFO reports and for giving explanations to the public in response to their many letters. I ran the UFO project from 1991 to 1994. And during that period of time, uh, it was fairly standard uh, research and investigation. It was very much events driven. I would receive two or three hundred UFO reports each year, and I would do my best uh, to investigate each and every one of them. At the end of the process, we found that uh, around 85 or 90 percent of the UFO sightings could be explained. Um, as a misidentification of some perfectly ordinary object or phenomena. But in about 5% of the cases, uh, you really couldn't explain them at all. Uh, speeds and manoeuvres uh, going beyond anything we had. Those are the real UFOs. 
Nick Pope's role in investigating UFO sightings is something his employer still won't discuss, although it denies the existence of men in black. We asked the Defence Ministry about its policy of investigating UFO sightings. They responded, the MOD does not, and to our knowledge, never has had staff who visit people who have reported UFO sightings. And Lehman's story became even more intriguing in 1996. A recently declassified file mysteriously disappeared from the Public Records Office, only to reappear two years later after extensive searches, letters from the public and questions in the House of Commons. I think the government probably know an awful lot more than they're telling us. And I don't think any of the general public will ever know the truth about any of these things. But I'm, I am convinced now that there are things that the government know that, that they don't tell us. There is no UFO cover-up, not so far as I'm concerned. And I, I've certainly played no part in one, and I'm not aware of one. In part two, a UFO expert asks why the government is unwilling to investigate recent mysterious activity in the skies over Shepton Mallet. And we revisit Warminster, a historical hotspot for UFO sightings. As well as one-off individual sightings, the southwest has been a particular hotspot for multiple appearances of unexplained phenomena. In the 1960s, satellites that could be seen with the naked eye were roaming in space. People were beginning to believe in large numbers that there might be something out there. Strange things were happening in the sleepy town of Warminster, and a flurry of unprecedented sightings were reported. Molly Carey was caught up in the excitement of the mystery. The thing was that um, some friends of my daughter's came one night to our house and asked my daughter if she wanted to go to Cradle Hill as there had been some uh, strange things seen there. And we'd, we had read in the papers about uh, what had happened and there'd been meetings at the town hall and we thought it, well, it's time to go, let's have a, go and have a look. So we went and when we got here, there were people um, down where the gate was and some up here and some walking about and they were all talking about things they saw up in the sky. The journalist Arthur Shuttlewood led many nighttime sky watching parties on Cradle Hill just outside Warminster. Arthur Shuttlewood would come up, he had um, some coffee and some homemade cakes and he always passed them round to the people who were sky watching and he would say what he'd seen and um, people were still coming up the hill and we would stay here all night. People would come back, uh, so there was something about the hill that attracted them back and uh, the things that were going on, and people made friendships. That there, and there was the couple that got married as a meeting up here. We did say at the time, if these aliens have picked this place to come down, they picked a friendly place. The crowds in Warminster were seeing things all right, but what? Sometimes uh, a particular wave of sightings will. Uh, build up, as it were, a sort of hysteria. That's not to say that people are uh, going crazy or making it up, but um, belief does play an important part in the UFO phenomenon, and sometimes people, people see what they want to see. I saw some things that I was a bit dubious about, but then at the time, I uh, didn't know a satellite from the moon. <laughs> some people did report it to the MOD and the Army, and they'd get a sort of short reply, but non-committal. And Arthur said, well, perhaps the army don't know any more than we do. Um, uh, but they wouldn't say that, would they? You see, they wouldn't let on. UFO spotters claim the Defence Ministry continues to give short shrift to members of the public 
untrained in identifying unusual aerial phenomena. However, many UFO sightings are experienced by highly trained individuals who are equally perturbed by what they've seen. For the last 29 years, I've looked at all the available evidence, and now, as a police officer, uh, over the last 15 years, I've, I've sort of re-examined it through the evidence, through police eyes, for want of a better phrase, and I think the evidence is overwhelming. You look at areas like astronaut comments, uh, cosmonaut comments, their military officers, the, a whole range of officers from admirals, colonels, generals. Similarly, you've got radar operators who've come forward. So to my mind, the calibre of those people means that they're not all wrong. Now, to date, the Ministry of Defence's uh, policy on UFOs is that there's never been a case that uh, uh, has been a matter of national security. Uh, having looked at the subject for many years now, and especially looking at police officer cases, that has to be a ludicrous statement. There are several cases around Britain involving police officers where objects have been seen above military installations, next to bulk fuel installations. We live in a world of terrorism and al-Qaeda, and that's got to be a matter of national interest. Unidentified flying objects remain a mystery to many ordinary people who witness them. Yet the government has always insisted that whatever might be out there, no reported sighting has ever resulted in a threat to national security. While our safety may not be at risk from extraterrestrials, we can't be so certain about man-made nuclear-powered satellites. We've obtained a secret Home Office dossier sent to all police forces and fire brigades in 1979. It warns of the dangers of nuclear-powered satellites returning to Earth and outlines emergency contingency plans that police and fire officers should adopt. We know uh, historically that some UFO sightings are caused by uh, space debris um, breaking up in the Earth's atmosphere. And at any given time, the Ballistic Missile Early Warning Centre at RAF Filingdales is tracking uh, several thousand such pieces of, of space debris, space junk. Um, as to anything larger, anything actually coming down, like uh, bits of uh, Skylab or bits of the Russian space station Mir, uh, anything actually coming through and surviving uh, actually at the surface is extremely rare. The MOD are interested in finding out whether things like that have re-entered and caused um, a stir. And of course, I mean, the public would be interested in this because a re-entering satellite which burns up in the atmosphere, releasing um, radioactive um, sort of materials, would pose a threat to the public. The threat of a radioactive accident caused by a returning satellite may seem remote, but individuals still continue to witness other mysterious UFOs. Early this year, Tina Covell-Palmer from Shepton Mallet filmed unexplained lights in the sky above her house. We were just um, showing my neighbours out. They'd just been round for a barbecue. And looking up, my husband looked up and suddenly said, oh, look, there's a satellite in the sky. It's bright yellow, like a big yellow ball. So we got the video cameras out, and all of a sudden, another one appeared. So that meant two. No sound, nothing. And we started recording them, then noticed there's a third one. When I zoomed in on them, they actually looked like they were spinning. Each one of them, you could see like, see like a halo around the edge of them. Now, it couldn't have been, in my mind, a plane. There was no flashing lights, there was no red or green lights on them. They were circular, so it wasn't a plane without, you know, wings. I can't really explain, obviously, what it was. Which was so Dennis Plunkett, who served in the Royal Air Force, has studied UFOs for the past 60 years. We invited him to meet Tina and her neighbours and to give his opinion of what they'd filmed. The objects we saw in the footage um, recently taken over Shepton Mallet were, I think, most likely to be genuine. I think the photo photography is very good. It's got some unusual aspects to it that you wouldn't normally know if you were an amateur at the subject. The very fact that they come in threes, which is quite a common um, number to turn up in, and you can hear their comments on there, and I think they're totally genuine and I think they could require um, some investigation by the government if the government was interested enough or appeared to be interested enough to do it. What I did is I wrote a letter to Whitehall and had a letter back from them, which was really, as I thought it would be, a very blank letter saying, unless it was an attack on the world, England, they weren't going to be very interested in it. It could have been sent to anybody with anybody's details on and they just changed the dates. 
is a standard response, I would have thought, saying they haven't got the money to deal with things like looking at anything, or they're not willing to divulge what it was, if there was anything they thought it was. The Defence Ministry has always insisted it approaches such reports without preconceptions. During my tour of duty at the Ministry, um, I certainly approached the phenomenon with an open mind, and um, I, I think that uh, my, my predecessors and my successors have done uh, likewise. You simply can't go in with any preconceived idea, although statistically you will know that uh, most UFOs will turn out to have a mundane explanation. Where you've got UFO sightings that are completely unexplained, um, then people might say, well, is, is that not uh, evidence of a potential threat? And I suppose, you know, in strictness, you'd have to say, well, you know, it could be anything, so who knows? Current Defence Ministry policy is not to investigate sightings unless they represent a threat to our safety. But can they be conclusive if no investigation is carried out? The government are turning a blind eye to it because as I say, for 50 years they've not had a solution to the problem. They hoped it would go away. What we saw, it was strange. Um, I don't believe in UFOs. Well, I didn't. Now, seeing those three objects in the sky, it does lead me to believe that it could have been something strange. Now, a UFO, I don't know what it was. I would love to know what it was, and I would like an explanation. If the government insists that mundane, rational explanations will always be found for UFOs, can its policy be truly open-minded? The thing is that anything that in, comes into our airspace, as you imagine a Russian plane coming in or some, so a potential enemy plane, um, that would be re regarded as an intrusion of our airspace. So why aren't UFOs and flying saucers, when they turn up, also um, accused of doing the same thing, of being intruders, if you like, into our airspace. Defence ministers officially declined to be interviewed, preferring to respond with written statements. Having viewed Tina's film, it said there was no corroborating evidence to suggest that the United Kingdom's airspace had been breached by unauthorised air activity. The world governments are feel impotent to... Um, the, the thing is happening as it happened over here um, uh, at Shepton Mallet within the last month. But nobody seems interested, and I think one of the reasons is they don't want to admit to the public at large that they're impotent. There's no way of stopping these objects turning up in our airspace and coming and going at will.